of the president traveled to Philadelphia this past Saturday, where he addressed the federal government's role in helping rebuild a section of I-95. As you know, that collapsed a week ago following a massive tanker crash and fire. However, the introduction by that state's senator, one of them, John Fetterman, is again raising concerns and questions about Fetterman's post-stroke recovery. Watch. And he is here to commit to work with the governor and the, the delegation to make sure that we get this fixed quick, fast as well, too. This is a president that is committed to infrastructure. Yeah, and then on top of that, the, the jewel uh, kind of a uh, law of the infraction uh, bill. Senator Fetterman, as you might remember, suffered a near-fatal stroke in May of 2022. He also recently received treatment for post-stroke and clinical depression. Joining us now, Niall Stanage, columnist with our partners at The Hill. Niall, welcome. Um, you know, a lot to unpack here. It's obviously, it's obviously tough to watch the senator uh, stumble like that, but it again raises questions about his capacities, right? It does, yes. I mean, a clip like that is clearly not good from Senator Fetterman's perspective. It does raise these questions. Those questions are already in the political atmosphere because not only of his actual medical history with the stroke and so forth, but because he and his team haven't always been completely forthcoming about that history, as you know, Blake. There was a heart condition, for example, that he had been diagnosed with apparently some time before he acknowledged it publicly. So you put all this together and it is uh, problematic for him and it keeps those questions in the foreground whenever his name comes up. You know, it, it keeps the questions in the foreground, Niall, and you talk about not being forthcoming. There's also questions about Senator Dianne Feinstein, uh, also a Democrat. Democrats have been calling on her to resign. That's not happening. Um, and there were questions about just how forthcoming her staff was about her condition. The reality here, Niall, isn't it, that Democrats need their votes and, and thus they're going to stay in office, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Democrats have this very, very slim majority, a 51-49 majority in the Senate when you include, you know, independents who caucus with Democrats and so forth. And amongst those 51, you have two people, Senator Joe Manchin, who is... Uh, an unreliable Democrat, I would say, in the view of at least the left of the party. And then, of course, you have Kristen, Kirsten Sinema, who is officially an independent now, though she still more or less backs her party. So that really uh, slims down the math in a big way for Democrats, which means that Senator Feinstein and Senator Fetterman are very important to Democrats just in conducting the business of the Senate, conducting the business of government. That clearly reduces any uh, incentive or motivation on the part of the party to oust those people from office because it would just uh, really augment or, or multiply the party's problems. You know, Niall, uh, apologies to our fantastic team who produced this segment, but I'm going to go off script here for a second That's because I find it fascinating what's going on in California between Joe Biden mm. uh, and Gavin Newsom, the governor there. What do you make of, of those two appearing together and then everything that's swirling around Gavin Newsom him appearing on Fox News, uh, raising his profile, and, and and the questions about whether or not he's running a shadow campaign. Yeah, I think it's really one of the most interesting questions in American politics right now, Blake. To me, just to be blunt about it, I think that Newsom is trying to position himself in case something would happen to President Biden. Now, we, we don't want that to be the case. You know, we don't want to appear to be uh, predicting that. But it seems to me that the California governor is really making sure that he is not only the, a name in the frame, but perhaps the foremost name if for some reason President Biden decided not to seek a second term. Now, let's say Biden is fine and goes on and seeks that second term. Then Newsom has clearly raised his national profile, you know, for future ambitions that he might have. But it is very interesting. I know it causes some disquiet in the White House and, and has done for months, just the degree to which Newsom is putting himself forward. He has more recently. Are they annoyed? Are they annoyed by this, Niall, as far as you know? Like, are they annoyed with Gavin Newsom? Or, you know, we heard Nancy Lou talk they, about uh, the word frenemies. 
Yeah, they certainly were annoyed with him a few months ago when he was making less clear that he wouldn't challenge Biden. He hadn't seemed to right. rule that out. That definitely caused annoyance in the White House. I would note that in fairness, he has been more explicit about saying that he won't get into a head-to-head -head contest with the president, and that has assuaged some of those White House concerns. Right. All right. Niall Stanage. Uh, with our partners over at the Hill. Always fascinating. Great to talk to you, sir. Uh, Niall, thank you. Good to talk to you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.